Good evening, everybody. Mike Naso here from IPR365.com and podweather.com with an update on our hurricanes in the Atlantic. And in the Atlantic today, we have two hurricanes and a tropical storm. And the tropical storm is actually forecast to be another hurricane before all is said and done. You can see, obviously, on the right side of your screen here, we have a very catastrophic hurricane in the form of Hurricane Igor, one mile per hour shy of becoming the first Category 5 in the Atlantic since Felix. Remember Felix, which was way down here in Nicaragua in 2007? Yeah, it doesn't seem that long ago, but three years since we've had a Category 5. And this one uh, might not get to it, but it's so close right now that it's really just a technicality. A very, very strong borderline Cat 4-5 hurricane. And it is currently reaching the western, southwestern edge of the ridge. It's going to push up and around that ridge and come pretty darn close to Bermuda. We're going to talk about Igor a lot. Now we also have Tropical Storm Carl, which is this little curly Q right in here. And when you see a curly Q like that under such a favorable upper level environment, high pressure aloft, outflow streaming southwest into the southern hemisphere, hot waters, September, we're lucky it's moving to the land now. Otherwise, this one too would be a strong hurricane. Still forecast to become a hurricane at the very least. And if it stayed over water long enough, it could be a strong one. Off the screen, we have Hurricane Julia. We'll talk about that as well. But right now, let's get uh, first to Igor. And as of 11 p.m. Eastern Time, Hurricane Igor was at 19.0 north, 53.9 west. Winds were 155 miles per hour, gusting to 190. So this is definitely the most intense hurricane we've seen in the Atlantic Basin in two years. And you can see the current motions west-northwest at 9. Expected to turn northwest and stay a Category 4 hurricane uh, until about Friday night. Then weaken gradually, but still be a strong hurricane when it makes its closest approach to the island of Bermuda by Saturday night and Sunday morning. The pressure right now, 925 millibars. Hurricane Andrew was 922 give you some perspective of how intense Hurricane Igor is. Here's the latest model guidance again. The current motion, if it continued for the next few days, would take it close to South Carolina. However, it will continue to turn up and around the ridge of high pressure here, and that clockwise flow is going to save the United States. But Bermuda is not out of the woods uh, by any stretch of the imagination as far as that goes. You can see the latest satellite of Hurricane Igor as it continues to spin out there. An absolute beautiful canopy of clouds shooting up and over the top of the hurricane with the outflow. However, note on the western side there, it does appear as though it's starting to get a little bit ragged. I know a hurricane this strong and strengthening still is hard to talk about getting ragged, but you see the little flatness here kind of right there. Watch that loop again, and you can see there that little bit of a flatness that comes. It's definitely starting to feel the tug, and you can see the elongation of the hurricane in that direction, generally towards that motion towards the northwest. Oh, I gotta tell you, if you're in the islands in Puerto Rico, look at this. Look at how close you are to this 155 mile per hour hurricane. You guys are gonna be very lucky, but you could still get some high swells. Don't think you won't. Now we do have Tropical Storm Carl as of 10 p.m. Central, 11 p.m. Eastern. Carl was at 18.6 north, 85.5 west. Winds were 45, gusting to 55, is moving west, northwest at 14, which should bring it inland sometime around mid-morning tomorrow. And that pressure is down now to 999 millibars, and it is expected to strengthen until landfall weaken, come back out, and be over water long enough to where by late Friday night it will be making landfall near Tampico, Mexico, probably, as a Category 1 hurricane. However, if it moves further to the south on this track, it might be overland a little longer, come out a little weaker, and have a little less time to strengthen. If it takes the northern end, it could actually uh, come out over water and have a lot more time to strengthen. And look at this time frame here. If it takes the southern edge of the cone, we're talking sometime by Friday morning, it could be making landfall. If it takes the center, as is expected, it could be late Friday night. If it takes the northern end, it could be sometime Saturday morning. So because of this angle of the coast and the way it slopes, the further north it is, the longer the time period it would have over water. However, looking at the latest satellite, this thing uh, seems to be streaming straight west, and that should bring it inland. We do have those tropical storm warnings, areas of Chetamal and uh, Cabo Catoche, 
north of Belize as the system makes landfall, we will have to deal with that. You can see the model guidance is pretty straightforward. It's going to be trying and trying and trying to threaten Texas, but with that high pressure built in, it is not going to do that, and this thing is going to get forced west or even west-southwest. And that could actually be bad for Mexico if we get the hurricane by that point moving straight west, but then it ends up taking a southerly dive that could prolong its stay over water rather than just shooting it right inland which means it would have more time to become a strong hurricane. Uh, you can see the GFDL model here does take Carl up close to Category 3 strength, and as we saw with Hermine, deadly Hermine, uh, the other day in Texas, this could definitely spin up fast, and if it spins up even as fast as Hermine did, it could become at least a Category 1 hurricane, so we're going to have to deal with that as time goes by. You can see the latest satellite of Carl. You can clearly see the systems organizing right in there, but it does appear to be moving straight west, even though technically it's west-northwest. The flow around the system gives the impression that it's getting steered west. Regardless, uh, a landfall uh, sometime by the morning as a moderate to strong tropical storm, and then weakening, coming back out, a quick burst of convection you'll probably see, and then uh, strengthening into a hurricane before landfall. But keep in mind, right now is Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, by the time it's expected to be making landfalls up here, Friday night, almost early Saturday, you're talking 8, 9, 10 p.m. Friday. So if it's Tuesday, it's got Wednesday to deal with land, and then Thursday into Friday to Friday night. So it should have two days over the Gulf, and if, if it has any type of pattern like this, I mean this type of curly Q pattern, watch out, Tampico, because this thing could really get serious. Now you can see other than our Carl here and our Igor, we have Julia. And Julia, believe it or not, even though it's rather flat, that's not the satellite, it is a flat system. Julia is a strong hurricane. Uh, as of 11 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, Hurricane Julia was at 16.7 north, 30.9 west. Winds were up to 105 miles per hour, gusting up to 125, moving west-northwest at 9 and that pressure is now down to 974 millibars. Okay, so Hurricane Julia is nothing to mess around with here. But thankfully, it's out over open water. It should continue to remain a Category 2, get close to 3. It'd be interesting to see if it wraps up an eye a little bit better and ends up becoming a major hurricane, because that would end up being our fourth major hurricane. You can see it is expected to remain a hurricane as it gets pushed west and then up back north by Sunday, a tropical storm moving out to sea and we won't have to deal with it anymore after that. You can see the models are in generally good agreement as some sort of a sea hook track like this. However, that's in the ensemble, so right now the track is just to the left and then north. However, it could easily be a little bit further to the west or a little bit further to the east right now. Other than an area like Bermuda or the Azores or the Cape Verde Islands, I don't think anybody's gonna see or hear anything from Julia. And for the Cape Verdes, you're done with it. So the Azores, you guys are in the model guidance a little bit here. Bermuda, you're nowhere close. you got to keep in mind, it looks close here if the system ends up here. But this is still hundreds of miles away. And by that time, Julia is expected to be weakening, and we wouldn't have to deal with it anymore. There's the latest satellite loop of Hurricane Julia. You can see that eye right in there spinning up. Note the wind shear from Hurricane Igor's impressive outflow shearing the west side of Julia. And, you know, I mentioned Igor looked a little flat. Watch that loop. Look at that. Boom, 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 boom. Just that wind shear, that constant spiking of the wind shear here, and that is just completely flattening out the western side. However, that's irrelevant. As long as the core of strong winds, the inner core of the hurricane, which is right in there, keeps spinning, Julia can crank up as much as she wants to. But look at this. There are the Cape Verde Islands. There is the eye of the hurricane. Look at how close. This thing spun up pretty quick, no doubt about that uh, at all. Now, how about upper-level winds? Well, here's the Atlantic with our two systems, Carl on the left, Igor on the right, and you could definitely see that, oh, man, Carl and Igor. Sounds like the Russians have taken over the Atlantic. You can see here that Carl has an absolute beautiful outflow pattern. This is exactly what you want to see for development over the top of a tropical cyclone. I mean, you don't see anything any better than this. Perfect around, straight to the southern hemisphere, low wind shear all around at high pressure. 
The bad news for Carl is that it's running into land. Igor, not quite as much, but a pretty favorable uh, environment around it. And then look at this. I mean, this is low shear in front of it. Ten knots here, not that bad at all. And there really isn't any indication that the environment's going to get horrific for the hurricane until later on. So Igor is going to remain an intense hurricane throughout the period, including its closest approach to Bermuda. You can see that even better here. There's the center of Carl underneath the high pressure, and there's the center of Igor off your screen underneath the high pressure, and you can see that even better on the shear tendencies. Igor's outflow is definitely shearing Hurricane Julia. Julia doesn't show up, even though it's almost a major hurricane, but Julia is currently getting that wind shear directly from the outer fringes of Igor, and you can see Carl has nothing. Perfect. Well, look at this. Look at these blues and blacks. If this thing stays over water long enough, Carl could be big, 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 big problem, big time for uh, Mexico, so keep that in mind. Here's another look. There's Hurricane Julia spinning. There's the Cape Verde Islands. Pretty good wave just moved off. A few of the computer models indicate in a couple of days we could have another system off Africa. Would it really surprise you this hurricane season? I don't think so. I'm Mike Nasa. I'll see you next time.